Wow, Rini, you make me sound interesting. That's pretty amazing. Okay. I'm going to get my first one here. Welcome. Thank you for coming this morning. I am so glad to be here. I have immediately fallen in love with Boston. I came here years ago to decide if I should go to college here, and then I changed my mind and went to California where it was warmer. But I love it, and I'm almost sorry I did because I've just been taken in by the beauty of it here. I also want to let you know that I am here this morning because of a dear friend who I lost a few months ago, and she kept saying, you have to come to Gordon, you have to come to Gordon. And I came to Gordon, and I see why my dear friend and encourager and supporter, Ava, wanted me to be here. Her father's science building stands on your campus, and it's such an honor to know that she poured into this place for generations, and now I get a chance to meet some of you. And those of you that I've already touched base with, I hope we stay in touch. It's wonderful to see creative people who love the Lord, who really want to make a difference in the world. So I want to challenge you this morning on something that I don't think will be too hard to do, because I found that Gordon is much more progressive than some other Christian colleges, just to let you know. I often come to Christian colleges and tell people that I'm a Christian committed to the Lord, and I work in the entertainment industry, and I kind of get some glazed eyes. And I come here, and I tell you, and you're like, well, yeah. <laughs> It's wonderful. So the school has done an amazing job to bring together the arts, which is crucial in God's eyes, and faith, which we can't live without. And there should never be any line between them. They should be blurred in our lives. I was told years ago that as a Christian, I shouldn't live my life as a TV dinner where everything is in separate compartments, but that we should live our lives as a... As a chicken pot pie, where everything is just all mixed up in one. And if we can do that in our lives, to bring our faith along with our involvement in our careers, our friendships, our passion for culture, then we can live integrated lives and whole lives that the Lord can use much more effectively. So this morning, I'm going to show you how I jumped into the world of Hollywood and how I found through living out my faith that it's a wonderful combination. And the main thing that I learned is that I'm a missionary, that we're all missionaries. The minute we sign up to be a Christian, the minute we ask Jesus to come into our lives, we're missionaries. It sounds scary because the first thing you think is you have to, you have to raise support. But really what it is, is that as a missionary, all we are to do is to give the good news wherever we go. In our dorm, in our neighborhood, when we're at the grocery store, when we're in the workplace, wherever we are, if we can be vessels to bring the good news to people, we will make an eternal difference. And don't you want that purpose in your life to know that you're making an eternal difference? Well, there are almost 7,000 Christians in Hollywood who are making an eternal difference. So I, I send you welcome from the Church of Hollywood. I'm going to show you how I see myself as a missionary here. And then my prayer is that you'll leave today saying, yeah, I want to think of myself as a missionary wherever I am. And sometimes the missionaries need to even reach out to the other missionaries because we need to encourage each other and we need to pray for each other and we need to keep each other going, especially through hard times and all that you've gone through, to just give someone a hug or to say, I'm praying for you, or to say, let me get you through today by just telling you a silly joke, whatever it might be, to know that every day God can use us in what we're doing. I do that through the Hollywood Prayer Network. I'm a producer. I create specials and documentaries. My husband's a composer. We have two sons who are filmmakers. We love to make a summer family film together every year. We've done that seven years in a row. Thankfully, they get a little better every year. We're working on it. But we want to be God's people, his ambassadors, salt and light in the Hollywood entertainment industry. And we love it. It's a challenging place to live and work, but it's so creative. I'm reminded of God's handiwork, of his beauty, of his truth every day. As I read scripts, as I talk to creative people, as I create stories, that God's hand is so much on our culture, and we can see that every day. And then to pray and ask him to come in and be more a part of our lives is really a thrilling thing to do. 
If you could start every morning, not by getting up and thinking, I've got to finish work for that class, I have this project I have to do, and just think of all the things of your day, but if you can think in the morning as a missionary to say, God, can you use me today? Would you show me how I can touch another person? Just ask him every morning, give me the words to say to somebody that I may not even know are important, but it could change their life. Just today, every day, use me somehow for your kingdom. That will make your life so much more exciting. You'll have no idea the open doors that he'll, that he'll make available to you. And that's what we do in Hollywood as a community of Christians, saying use us every day so that we can be a part of your work here in this world. I want to show you five minutes of how we define our mission field. And then when I'm done, I'll get you into some details about what it is that you can do to be a part of engaging in culture, being a part of the media, by being Christians just showing up every day. There is a tribe whose drumbeat is heard and followed in every corner of the earth. For the most part, they are confined to the area known by many as the TMZ, the 30 Mile Zone. Yet they have global influence. You're impacted every day, as are your children and your grandchildren. The Hollywood Tribe. This tribe has their own gods that they worship. This tribe has their places of worship. Mind control, X-Pace, and X-Pace. This tribe has their own belief systems. Well, I have a belief system, but I don't choose to have a religion. Well, I, I believe in, uh, I, I mean, I'm very open to all religious practices. I'm kind of spiritual without being in any kind of particular sect. I guess I'm a Christian. I believe in karma and just, you know, you should, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. I'm more along the lines of like super brain yoga and pranic healing and um, incense and being positive and not taking ownership of others' energies. For years, the people living and working in Hollywood were abandoned by the church. But now, as Isaiah said, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. A few have dared to go into this mission field. This is their amazing story. I'm Karen Cabell, and I am the founding director of the Hollywood Prayer Network. And I'm excited to tell people about how God is moving in Hollywood today. We started the Hollywood Prayer Network five years ago and have seen incredible growth of God planting the desire in people's hearts around the country to pray for Hollywood as a mission field, as the world's most influential mission field. When I came out here, it took me probably eight years before I met my first industry Christian. And that was a very common experience for people in the industry. In the last six years, people are finding connection to the body out here before they even arrive. We need to have Christians here in the industry who love this place, who want to be here. I love Hollywood, who, who see Hollywood as a place that is not beyond redemption. So people just need to stop looking at Hollywood and say that it's Sodom and Gomorrah because it simply scripturally is not. But you know what it is? It's Nineveh. And if you look at what happened in Nineveh, Jonah went there into, into this city known for its wickedness and people's hearts started to change and the entire city changed. It doesn't say a lot of the people changed. The entire city changed. At the age of, I'd say, 12, I wanted to be an actress. And I pursued it and pursued it and pursued it. I formed a relationship with the Lord in 1991 and I still began to pursue just a little bit more, but the more I fell in love with Jesus, the more I decided I didn't want to be a star. I would rather be a light. We need more Christians in the industry. 
We need producers and directors, cameramen, composers. We also need financiers. We need bankers and investors. We need to get out there and not necessarily make Christian films, but put Christians in Hollywood. Let's not abandon Hollywood. Let's not abandon the world that, uh, the place where you can affect popular culture for years to come. In fact, let's encourage it. In fact, let's let's put some, um, let's put some prayers. Let's put some money. Let's put some resources where we all think it should be, and try to change the next generation of folks. And if there's one thing I can say to the church body at large who is not familiar with what is happening in Hollywood, God is moving in Hollywood. And God is continuing to move. What we need now are Christians on the outside to help us, to support us, to recognize us as God's children serving Him in a place that's not too scary, but a place that reaches the world and can have an eternal impact. Without prayer, you're absolutely lost. Knowing that there are people supporting us in prayer makes a huge difference. We need prayer partners. You please pray for us because we need it. So our mission field is a quite a known place around the world. You all have your favorite movies that you go to, your favorite TV shows that you watch, the songs that you love to sing. And yet, to make a difference in culture as Christians, we have to engage. We have to be discerning in what we do. And I found there are two extremes in the Christian world. There are either people who say, I can't watch that, it's terrible, there are too many swear words, or it's too violent, I, I, I have to stay away from the media. Or there's the extreme of people mass consuming, loving all of it, and not thinking through anything about what are the messages? What is it saying? Is this impacting me? Or how can I use this to share my faith with other people? I find whether you're going into the media or not, whether you just love to watch movies or whether it's a part of your culture, that we can use entertainment, we can use film and television as a way to share our faith with other people. There's a statistic that says that when men get together with just men, the number one topic of conversation is sports. When women get together with each other, the number one conversation is relationships. And when men and women get together as a group, the number one conversation is entertainment. So you can use entertainment to share your faith with people, to talk about what things you're engaged in that you're interested in and what things you don't agree with, and not be judgmental but to be conversational about it. It's fascinating to go to a movie, Life of Pi, and say to people, wow, really makes you think about how we look at life, doesn't it? How do you look at life? Did that make sense to you? Would you rather have it be full of animals or would you rather have it be more science and more um, facts that way? We can, we can talk about things like that. I want to give you a little view of what some people look at Hollywood. There's the daisy. This is a cartoon that was found in the LA Times. It's just a normal daisy. Then there's the romantic daisy. He loves me, he loves me not. Then there's the Hollywood daisy. I love me, I love me a lot. We're kind of known for being a narcissistic uh, community. And the fact is, any of you who are artists, you end up thinking a lot in your head. There's the stories that you create, the visuals that you're seeing. You don't always communicate what you're, what you're experiencing in the world. And in Hollywood, there's so much going on in, in, in people's heads that they start just thinking about themselves. And how we're different as Christians is we're reminded we need to reach out to others. We need to care about others. We need to pray for others. And so the Christians stand out in places like that because we don't have the same foundation and mindset. There's also Noah's Ark, two of every kind of animal, the sloths, the tarsiers, and the film school students. So those of you who are film school students here, the others might find you just a little odd, but it's okay, we need your type in the world. God created you perfectly for that. A lot of times people in the arts really create that as their church. This is a gentleman that was passing out cards um, in a music store near my house, and he felt like his club was his church. And really, this church today is the movie theater, and the Sunday school is television. 
And the hymns that we sing are on our iPads because culture is what's shaping us. Culture is what is giving us our worldview. And so we have to be aware of that and we have to know what of it that I'm listening to do I agree with and what don't I? And then, of course, there's the tribal look at celebrities. Us Magazine literally realized that there are tribes of people in the world, and one of them is Hollywood. So if any of you are coming to the tribe of Hollywood when you're done graduating, come and join the tribesmen. We would love to have you. It's a really wonderful group of people. If you can do what I... I saw this once, and I made this sign, and I put it up above the door going out of my office, so that every day I remember I am entering my mission field. And when I do that, that's when my mindset changes. That's when I know that God has something for me that day. And I can somehow engage in the world as a believer. Keep that in mind. Think of that. Put a little note on your mirror in the morning or by your door. Or say, say, you know what, even when I walk out on campus, I'm walking into my mission field. There might be someone struggling with something more than I am. Someone who had someone that was, who was running in the marathon. Whatever's going on, can I encourage somebody else today? Can I do something to make a difference in this world? Can I watch a movie and talk to somebody and ask their worldview and get in conversation about it? There are so many different ways that you can do that. I want to quickly compare the Hollywood mission field with the Maasai tribe in Africa. It's a good way to say, oh, I get it, or to tell your parents, you know what? There is a commonality in all people groups around the world. This is Mr. and Mrs. Maasai. Our friends Lisa and Byron work in the Maasai land, and they go there because they love the people. They build relationship with them. They learn about the gods that they worship, the traditions of the land, the way they dress. They, our friends even started dressing like them because there are practical reasons of why they look that way. It makes more sense in their culture. And I, I met a wonderful woman, Rachel, yesterday, and I'm dying to go and visit you in your country one night someday. This is Mr. and Mrs. Hollywood. They have their own traditions. They have their own gods that they worship. They have their own culture. They have their own look. It's the accessories that are important. It's, uh, there's a great film with a quote that says, what separates man from beast is the ability to accessorize. And that's Hollywood. The smaller the cell phone, the cooler you are. The casual clothes, but the leather shoes. It's all the culture of how it works there. Here's the main watering hole in Maasai land. This is where people come to gather because it's the only shade for miles. So our friends Lisa and Byron hung out under this tree and they started building relationships with the people. And then Lisa started bringing her Bible and the people wondered, what is that? So she opened it and soon she was leading Bible studies just naturally because she was sharing her life with them and they were sharing her li their life with her. You have watering holes here. You have places where you hang out with people. Realize that when you're there, that's God's purpose to put you in relationship with other people so that you can start opening up who you are and asking questions and finding out who other people are. This is our watering hole, not far from my home. It's the Aroma Cafe. It's always covered with people with computers creating their next script or people at a table pitching their story to someone, talking to their agent. Everybody's involved in community there. It's a place where the creative people come out of their isolation after they're done writing or, or creating something and, and connect with other people. And we hang out with these people and we love them and we get to know them and we get to build relationship with them. This is the main drag in Maasai land. You see that at the very bottom. The, the, uh, our friends had to bring a four-wheel drive vehicle to get across the terrain. It's a dangerous place. There are thieves on the road. There are wild animals. There's the chance of malaria. But our friends are not afraid to go there. They want to go there because they believe that's where God is bringing them to use their gifts and talents and to pour into other people. It may take five or six hours for our friend Byron to drive down this road to meet with the tribal chief that he wants to meet with and find out when he gets there that he's moved on. They're a very nomadic group of people and they go wherever the grass is, wherever the shade is. Well, it may take five or six hours to get down the 101 freeway in Hollywood and get to the Paramount tribe. And then when you get there, we may find that the tribal chief has moved on to the Universal tribe or the Warner Brothers tribe or the Sony tribe because people are very nomadic in our industry. They keep moving. They go to the next project. They're all freelancers and they have to go where the work is. And so we know we only have a little time to build relationships with these people. 
And when we get a chance to do that, then we can start digging in deeper and getting to know more of what makes them tick and where their hurts are, where their struggles are. The power of the media is unbelievable. If any of you know who said this, give me the screens of the world and I will control the world. Anybody know? Adolf Hitler took over the theaters in Germany before he took over the country because he knew the power of going into a dark movie theater and of having people get messages in their brains in the dark and how it soaks into their heart. He knew the power of the media. We have, as Christians have to know the power of the media, not only if we're ones creating it, but if we're ones consuming it and to know how it's impacting our lives. Anyone know this? Give me the songs of a nation and it matters not who writes the laws. The lyrics of songs really show the heart of a nation. Plato knew that. He knew that you can tell the heartbeat of a country if you read the lyrics of songs. So you know the lyrics that you're listening to are showing the hearts of the people that are creating that. Be aware of that as believers. Be smarter than other people. Listen and question and talk about it. And pray for the people whose songs that you love to listen to. Pray for the people in the films that you love to go see. And know that those prayers are making an eternal difference in those people's lives. Sometimes people say, how can you work in Hollywood? All of that content is horrible. And I say, I want to reach the hearts of the people. Because the content won't change until the hearts of the people creating it change. That's where we'll see a difference. If you want to make a difference in the world, keep your heart pure. And then you go into your workplace, and whatever you do will be different because of your heart. That's the power that each of us have as Christians. We just show up if we're seeking Jesus, and we will change the world. This room is enough to change the world. We don't even need all those other universities. If every single one of us in this room was committed today to be discerning in our thoughts, to be committed to our faith, and to be the best we can be in our work, we could change the world. That's really exciting. That's amazing to know that you're not just one little person in a big globe, that you are a child of God, and whatever your choices are, they impact the world. And my prayer for you is that you will go out and you will make a difference in the world, and you will pray for the people who are impacting culture, and that you will have a chance to talk to others about what's going on in our world. And by your conversation and by your heart, you will see things shifting in our land. God can do it all on his own, but he chooses to use us. And it's an honor to be a part of his kingdom. It's an honor to be a part of what he has to do in this world. And if you could realize that when you get up in the morning, that you are an important person, touching culture, changing other people, and living out a life that is so exciting once you just ask him every morning, what do you have for me today? And here's how you can help change the media. Not only pray for people, but if you want to get into the media, be the best that you can be. And come out in whatever city, in New York, there's an incredible community of people. You'll see, you'll see Mako Fujimura, a friend of mine, on Friday. He leads an amazing ministry in New York City for artists. Ralph Winter, who's coming on Friday, a dear friend. We both minister in Hollywood to people. Whatever city you go into, you can find a community of Christians to be a part of. Also, tell anybody who talks against the media, whether it be at your church, your parents, friends, anybody who might be afraid or may think that it's horrible there, challenge them to say, you know what? Instead of talking against the people there, pray for those people. And those prayers will change not only those people, but the content of what's happening. It is such a change already. We have so many films coming out in the next couple years based on biblical stories. It's unbelievable. You'll see coming up Moses, Noah, Cain and Abel, Pontius Pilate, Mary, Mother of Jesus, all studio feature films that are based on biblical characters and biblical stories. That's because of prayer. That's because of Christians coming back into the world, being a part of the conversation of culture, and then watching it be contagious so that other people want to be a part of that as well. And that's what you can be a part of too. Talk to each other. Ask each other questions. 
Don't go to a movie without talking about it afterwards because there's something powerful. God said, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. Why is it important to confess things? Because talking about something makes it more real. Talking about what you're going through, talking about what you're watching, what you're seeing, makes it more real, and you get more in touch with it, and there's a power in that. So know that and take a chance and say something to other people. Talk to God out loud. As you're walking through campus, I became a Christian walking through campus and saying, God, it's such a beautiful day. My roommate has had such an impact on me. Would you come into my life and change me? Just talking to him out loud totally transformed my life. And he makes that available to us all the time. So be a part of culture and engage in it and know that because you show up, you're making an eternal difference. And I want to let you know, outside, there are brochures and DVDs. This five minute is a part of 90 minutes of Christians who are working in the professional world, talking about their faith, talking about how do we get engaged in culture. There's a way that you can even be a part of praying. We send out monthly emails of what's going on in the global entertainment industry and how to be praying each month with us and for us. You can be a prayer partner. We can match you up with a Christian professional working in the Hollywood entertainment industry, and you can pray for them along with your other prayers as, a, as your media missionary. We have wristbands outside, red wristbands that say 90028, the world's most influential zip code. It's the zip code of Hollywood. There's remote prayer stickers. Stick them on your, on your remote, and as you're changing the channel, it says stop and pray for this show. There are so many ways that you can get involved in praying with us and for us and for us to pray for you. If you're getting into the arts, any fine arts, performing arts, creative arts, we want to pray for you as well. So take these, pass them on, keep them from yourself, and know that as God's children, you can make an eternal impact in culture, and in the world around you. So let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you so much for these students. I thank you for what you have in store for them. I thank you for giving them wisdom for the media that they watch, for the, for the impact that they can have on others, for them being open about their faith just by talking about films and television shows and songs and internet and YouTube videos and all that's around them, video games. Lord, that you have given us the media as a tool to be better in our faith. And I ask that you can embrace them, bless them. And those that want to go into the arts, Lord, I commission them to be ambassadors of you in the creative world. I thank you for Gordon College. I thank you for what you're doing in the lives of the students and the faculty. And I pray your blessing on them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.